Hi, Luminaires. I hope everybody is having a beautiful day. I thought I would join you here on YouTube and talk about your ascension symptoms. It's kind of hard to say. The good and the ugly, even though there's not really a such thing as good and ugly. But um, I think we understand the term of that. And we're going to break it down a little bit. I say we, I'm going to lean into some spirits here today, as well as talk about what you can do to help ease those shifts and changes in your body. If you are interested in joining a healing that I am doing based on the Ascension symptoms, you can join me over on Learn It Live. I'll put the link in the description below as well in the chat thread so that you can enjoy that healing. I'm gonna focus on the healing getting down into the cellular level. So it's not just an overall feel good healing, it's more of a, a deeper cleanse to help your body receive the different frequencies that are coming. So let's just break it down and talk about it because I think when I hear people talk about ascension symptoms, I'm like, oh gosh, you know, sounds a little woo to me, sounds a little far out of reach, but let's just open the floor right now. Maybe if you're here with me, put your fingers to the keyboard and let me know what's going on with you these days that haven't been going on with you probably two years ago. And I'm not saying normal getting older, normal wisdom, growth, things of that nature. It's how your body is managing. How is your mental body managing? How is your emotional body managing? So much is happening so fast these days. I'm going to list a few. Oh, I've already got some rolling in. <laughs> headaches. <laughs> headaches. You didn't have headaches before, but you got some headaches now. Um, yes. Uh, Colleen is sharing, I feel like I'm swimming through the air. I like to, I, I connect to that statement, Colleen. I feel like I'm going through jello. Like the air is thicker than it was before. I feel like I need to breathe deeper than I had to before. Like I have to consciously focus on my breath to take it in. That wasn't like that before. And it's not like I had, I mean, I guess I have had some respiratory with the COVID and everything, but this is different. So there's that, which could be written off scientifically. So let's set that one aside then. Dizziness, Mel is sharing. Um, that is, that's new, isn't it? <laughs> and Michelle is saying, I feel like I have more anxiety than I've ever had before. I've heard this so many times. My heart just goes out to everyone who is sensitive and is dealing with these adjustments. So I used to be a great sleeper, um, solid sleeper. You put me anywhere when I'm tired and I can lay down or just lean on something and I'm out. <laughs> I can't do that anymore. It's maybe it's this newfound anxiety. Maybe it's I don't need as much sleep anymore, but I have noticed I cannot sleep the same the way that I did before. Unica is sharing fatigue, slow metabolism. And Mel also add the insomnia. Okay, the fatigue, very, very real. And we're gonna break these down. And the slow meta metabolism, very, very real. Uh, I create love. She's, <laughs> hello, beautiful people, hugs. <laughs> Lillian is agreeing with Colleen. Yes, some headaches, more grounding in of energy, conscious of moving energy. Yeah. What about some, what we would judge or consider as positive side effects? So that would, for me, Lillian, that whole conscious of moving energy. How about, is anybody hyper aware of the oddities or things that are clearly out of place. Whereas before it was like, whatevs, this is kind of weird. I used to label it. I feel like I'm in a rated B movie. Like somebody's directing it, but it's just a little off, but it's entertaining and it's fine. Now when I find myself in it, I'm like, stop, <laughs> push back. I don't think I need to be here. Maybe I need to leave. Like it's uncomfortable. But I think it is what we might judge or consider a positive side effect because you have the awareness of it, more information around it. Mel has even shared energy vibrating in the body. And hi, Robin. It's nice to have you here. Hi, Lumi. <laughs> Create Love is like, is it normal to feel like your body's always vibrating? 
probably in the past, not so normal, but it is going to be very normal now. Okay, so let's take what we have so far. And Unica is adding, you can keep adding, keep adding. I think it's nice that we all see that everybody else is going through things as well. Uh, ringing in the ears. Didn't have the ringing before. Didn't have an ear injury, a sickness, nothing of that nature, but you're having constant ringing of ears. <laughs> Thank you, Julian Rocco Pessa. Um, <laughs> Robin's agreeing to yes, out of place. Um, noticing the earth's vibration. I feel like I'm in my own bubble, says Patty. But come on, I have to say your handle. <laughs> Golden bird brain. <laughs> Is it Mercury in retrograde? Okay. So with ascension, ascension is simply um, saying that, hey, you're alive in a time and age where Earth is increasing its frequencies very quickly. And we've noted this and heard that it was coming in the early aughts, in the 90s. All these books started coming out, information, new Earth, things of this nature. So now, um, probably around 2015, 16 is really when it just kind of kicked into gear. And we're noticing if you follow the Earth's Schumann resonance, you will see on the recordings that we're having a lot more activity, more than ever documented before. Uh, you'll also notice we've had more solar flares. And so these are reactions of the Earth's energy increasing its frequency. We've also had access to us, and I know this is going to sound really woo-woo, so just kind of put your seatbelts on. Like That's how Maitland will deliver information to me. She's like, you just put your seatbelt on so I can tell you this. And I'm like, okay, because sometimes when she tells me things, I'm like, I'm out of here. I just want to walk out of the room. I want to walk away from her. I'm like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. You're sounding pretty crazy. So she's like, just sit still. So that's the put your seatbelt on. Sit still. Um, we're having more energy available to us from our galaxy and from our universe with the position of planets and stars. So there's a lot of newness rolling in. And when we get into newness, just think about something on a daily basis that you do, and all of a sudden something new is added, and you got to slow down. You got to pull back. You got to think about it. Got to navigate it a little bit different. This is what's happening. You are navigating your body's energy and frequency just a little bit different, and it's running high. Not high like a fever that's going to make our bodies collapse, but it's running higher where our body is like, oh, we've got, you know, high grade octane gas in our body. Now we can to run different. I don't know why I said it like that. Just forget that that came out of my mouth. <laughs> shadow say, oh, hey, Shadow. Hi, Gigi. Says, I can tell immediately when something is out of alignment, especially in terms of my own thoughts. And it feels more important than... Wait, it feels more important than I respond to it promptly. So now that you have that awareness, you respond to it. You have a quicker turnover. That's huge. That is one of the positive benefits. Mel says, also getting tingling in the crown of the head. And Regina is adding, time is flying by. Gosh, isn't it flying by? Lillian is even adding more clear intuition. So as these frequencies are coming in, the body is physically adjusting. So we have four bodies. We have the mental body, emotional body, physical body, and the spiritual body. So you're going to recognize more shifts with the physical body, right? Because it's used to running just fine. You put some food in it. You give it some sleep. You dress it. It's good. But now it's giving you different feelings and sensations. Do you hear all that noise? It's like somebody is drumming in my apartment. I've never heard this noise before. It's not music, but it sounds like music. It's not my phone. Okay, just bringing in some extra sounds. It's funny because I can't pinpoint where it's coming from. I just know it's coming from that side of the room but it's echoing. Okay. Can you hear it? It's not just me. I've never had, I've been here three years. I've never heard that noise. <laughs> you were saying the other day you liked drumming. And thanks for pulling the drumming in, guys. You can cut it out now. It's very 
is taking my attention away from talking to you? Um, that's really bizarre. I can't wait to inspect what that is. Okay. Um, getting back to it, your body is going to show you the signs quicker than maybe your head or your emotions because your mental body and your emotional body are more in the subtle light energy realm. So it might take you a little bit longer to go, huh, that's different. I didn't notice that. Or I'm having these different new thoughts or my thoughts are clearer or my thoughts are more muddy. You know, it, it's going to go both ways until it levels out for you. So with the physical body, those, as we talked about, the headaches, the dizziness, the ringing in the ears, the feeling like you have a more difficult time breathing, like there's less oxygen in the air or your body is not taking in enough, which I think our bodies are shifting and growing uh, and adapting to a new environment that's being given to us. That is just a personal opinion. I hope you find your personal opinion and all of this conversation. So our bodies are giving these signals. What can we do to help ease that or make it more in the flow to our day-to-day -day lives? And a big thing is going to be acknowledging it, accepting and acknowledging. So if we just say, oh, it's another headache and throw some medicine at it or just kind of push and work through it, then it changed rhythm. Um, then we're not really doing it justice. So take the time, say, okay, this is a headache. Is it something that's normal or not? Is it mine or is it from the greater pressures of ascension? Do that with all of your physical symptoms. Is the dizziness, is it mine? Meaning I didn't drink enough water and I'm dehydrated. That's totally on me. Or did I drink enough water and it's not on me and it's the pressures of the environment. And so is it mine? Is it not? When we get into the not, that's when I want you to go, okay, I'm a part of this bigger picture. I don't want you to see that you have to fight against these ascension side effects. It's not like I got to manage it and I got I to gotta tough it out. Like, please, no, 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 no. Go remember, you're part of the whole picture here. You, you're actually co-creating it. Whether you feel like you are consciously or not, you are. You're contributing. So ask your body, how can we do this differently? Ask your body. Your body is so intelligent. This is something that you can do all the time, even if it's your thing. Like you didn't drink enough water. That's why you got a headache and that's why you're dizzy. You can say, <laughs> um, hey, body, like what, what can I do different? What can we do different? How can we accept this better? And wait for the information that follows and take that information as long as you are physically safe. Even if you're getting information, right, Maylin, that is like a little weird. I remember one time here's a personal share for you that you maybe didn't want. <laughs> but I remember one time I had really bad digestive issues and uh, I went to three separate doctors, all like big in their field. I took antibiotics. I took antiparasites. I took crazy stuff. And boy, I was torn inside now. I was traveling and I picked up something. I went to kinesiology, I did healings, and finally I asked spirit, I was like, what do I do? I asked my body, what do you need? Cabbage. It was like cabbage soup. I'm not a fan of cabbage. I did cabbage soup for like two weeks or something. It was like a really weird um, amount of time. It was just this. And after it was done, everything was clean and I was completely fine. So even though I didn't like the advice that was given, I'm like, am I going to be safe? Is it harming me? No. Have I tried other things and it didn't work? Yeah. So why can't I just try something like this and see what happens? And it worked out. So ask your body. Your body is intelligent. Please ask your body. Were you prego? No, it wasn't prego. I had gone to Mexico, <laughs> drank some water. I had done something like that, but not prego. <laughs> Patty says, I definitely noticed that I feel like I have to drink a ton more water now. Yes, me too. I am noticing that. Um, Lightfully You says, thankfully, I'm feeling more myself in the last decade. So grateful. Yes, more of your frequency coming forward. So those are some of the physical items that are occurring and what you can do to help. Is it mine? Is it not? If it's not, or even if it is, you can follow through with body intelligence. Ask yourself, well, what do you need? How can we make this easier? Just how can we make this easier? It's not, 
Anything else? Just we want to make it easier. Shetland Pony Princess. I just want to hug you. <laughs> I think I had bronchitis for the last two months. Took elderberry, antibiotics, everything. And finally, Spirit was like, hot toddies. And I was like, better in 12 hours. See, it's that stuff. That. What a beautiful like, share. Thank you for putting that out there. It's like that. Who knows? I believe we have access to all the answers that we need. I think we just forget to ask. And we don't trust that the answers we're receiving are accurate. So let's look at some of our mental ascension side effects. Let's go for the good and the ugly, whatever that means to you. All of it's fine. It's just different, right? It's different. So some of you said, I got better, clear intuition. I can see like what I call the weirdness or the rated B movie that's happening around me. Like sometimes oh, Colleen and I were in the car the other day. Thank you for the hearts. I love it. Yay. <laughs> we were in the car the other day and watched this woman walk and on the crosswalk, totally legal. And we were both like, where is she from? She was not human. She was gorgeous woman, gorgeous. But it was like, you are not from this planet. And both of us recognized it. And it was like, wow, that was really interesting. You know, whereas before I would think, oh, unique person. And you would just go, or I wouldn't even notice. But now it's like, whoa, I am clearly seeing different groups or types of humans which we might in the future very well know that they are um, hybrids or walk-ins or, oh my God, it sounds so sci-fi. I feel like we need to be sitting in front of a fireplace just shooting the breeze like this. But I mean, these are things that it's, it's time to talk about. It is the multi-dimensionals that are presenting as humans. God, it sounds so wild to put out there. This is going to become common language. That's the crazy point, too. Hi, Mom. <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> um, so you're going to start noticing those things. Is that a positive or a negative for you? I don't know. It's going to be on your end. But when you're noticing that your mental body is changing the way that it is thinking, if it's being bombarded by too much frequency, so too many thoughts, intrusiveness, or if it's all of a sudden just being very cleared out. I'm having more pockets of being completely clear and very excited, but I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know why I feel this way. I get really, really inspired like a color hits me a different way, or I watch how the wind goes through a tree, right? And I just go, oh my God, I am like, I'm so pumped to be alive. I mean, I don't wake up every day going, yay, human, can't wait for my day. I still wake up and go, what am I doing? Sit on the end of my bed and I'm like, I'm not getting out of bed until I, I grab that feeling of love and ease. Like I will tell myself, do not get up, stay down. I told myself this morning, stay down. You are not ready to get out of this bed. And so I laid there until I could clear my thoughts, clear my energy, rest a little bit, find the joy and the happiness for putting my feet in the ground. That's just a promise I make to myself, but it, it took me a challenge. But then on the way in, like, after going through some traffic and some construction and things that would normally be like, hi, I got this wave of complete excitement, total inspiration, can't wait for this. And I'm like, for what? what what's coming? What's happening? Couldn't put my finger on it. Are you guys getting that? So when those things come and go, whether it's the anxiety rolling in, anxiety me rest between mental and emotional body because they really hit all of it. And then you have these physical responses. So we'll talk about that in a second. But when the mental body is just firing off like that, then I, I say fall back, but it's almost like it's just a sit back because you know, you're sensitive, you're psychic, you're intuitive. Do you know what I mean? Where you can pull away to a higher perspective 
so you can call it fall up or fall back to see more. So you're still behind your eyes and you're still very human, but you have this lifted viewpoint that that thing that you do, put that on, <laughs> pull up and back. First, you have to recognize that you're getting all of that mental body shifts. <laughs> I love watching the hearts. They're almost going to the beat of the drum over there in my space. <laughs> so you fall back. And then when you fall back and you look at it, tune in to the style that you psychically tune in. Whether that's clear cognizant, you just know things. Whether it's clear sentient, you feel it in your body. Clairvoyant, you see it in your mind's eye or in your dream state kind of a thing. Or clear audient, where you hear. There's all kinds of other ways to perceive energy, but just lift up and fall back into that realm. And then you ask, how can I bring it forward? Like, give me a clue. How can I bring it forward more? How can I grab this better? And if it's something that you're not wanting to grab hold of, then you're gonna ask, how can I allow this to be easier? And you will get downloads, you will get instructions. It's wild. Sometimes it'll feel like instructions from just a, a broader, greater source. And for some of you, it's gonna feel like it's from your council or from your spirit team or from one multidimensional. But we have as, oh gosh, we did the um, YouTube member, kind of class with grace. And so if you're here on YouTube and you have a YouTube membership in the middle tier, we do a class with grace. And she came in and talked about how the multidimensionals were helping people. And I think we're doing a part two for next month, but it was really um, eye opening. I've been talking to grace about it and they are here to help us mentally, emotionally, and physically and spiritually. And they're going to hone in physically on a cellular level, mentally, and the subtle light energy to help us maintain these frequencies that are coming through. So you're not alone. You are going to be getting directions. I've been more, oh, wow. The realm of Ansara, or is it, uh, un, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I have been having more allergic reactions than normal. So your sensitivity is through the roof. Right? The body is changing. Even um, I was just texting with my friend Rod, and he was like, what the F is going on? <laughs> Something between the eclipse and my birthday, I feel like I'm getting younger. Or time is stretching. Time is shorter. Time, like, it's just getting to be different, which is going to push against our belief systems. And once we have really befriended what belief systems we have and why we hold them, you're going to find a whole new field to play in. So definitely with your mental body, please check in and ask yourself, what are you believing in? And it sounds like child's play, maybe. <laughs> it's not child's play. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm being silly today. It is when you understand what you truly, like where you invest your energy, what you believe in, and you look at the root of it. Why is it there? What's it holding for me? Then you can unravel that bit and figure out, is it still holding space for me in the way that I'm growing? Because if it's not, come away from it. it. You don't have to burn whatever it is. You don't need to attack or defend or harm or shame or blame whatever it is. It is perfect and beautiful exactly for what it is, okay? It's not about you righting a wrong or saving other people from it. No. Other people who might have the same belief system, that might work for them perfectly. We're also uniquely different. We can't really link on to each other and claim absolutes. So this is a new ground we're working on. This is part of the ascension. There's no absolutes where I think before, we could comfortably, as a group of humans, get together and go, hmm, this is good for us. This is bad for us. But it's just in general, I'm speaking in general terms. I'm certain we could sit here and find very specific points that are like, not good for any human. But I'm just saying in general. Okay, let's look at our emotionals. Again, I want to remind you, if you want some help or a boost of energy, on Learn It Live, I'm doing a healing on the Ascension 
side effects or symptoms. And um, oh, that's going to be today, this afternoon. But if you're watching at any time and you're not with me live, you can go to the recording and watch it. You don't need to be there live to have the healing live. That's something I really enjoy about energy. It's not confined to a moment in time. You can go back to a recording and you will experience it as if it is brand new and made just for you every single time because every single moment you are a new and different person. So don't worry if you've missed the mark, you haven't missed anything, just come over and join us. Okay, let's talk about our emotions. Aw, Nana says, hi, beautiful souls. Giving big highs to everyone. Oh, goodness. Uh, Shetland Pony Princess, here's another hug. Uh, my nervous system has been shot for years and my body completely reset under eclipse totality. There you have it. Now, like... Don't you want to sit down and just talk freely about that and try to explain that to someone? Or would you like to know exactly why did that happen for you? Healing is going to come spontaneous and with great ease. Like that part is going to be incredible. Oh, hi, Emma Louise. You look forward to this. Thank you. Thank you. And Rebecca is sharing. I've been feeling so tearful lately, just crying, sobbing. Colleen and I were talking the other day about how a good cry is like right in there. She was like, we were talking about how do we manage this? And I was like, I normally have to get out in the garden and weed or just touch the earth for like do manual labor on the earth for some amount of time before I kind of come to. And Colleen is like, you know, a good cry, uh, music, um, walking, <laughs> all these kinds of things can help take us out. <laughs> so emotions, anybody here, like Rebecca saying, feeling very emotional, very weepy? Because I think uh, Jane is adding very much anxiety. Let's talk about that. Um, <laughs> the realm of asthma is like, yes. So, and Sarah, or and Sarah, maybe you can pronounce it for me in the chat thread so I can say it correctly. Um, Colleen is like, I'm walking five miles a day to manage my anxiety and to ground. <laughs> and Regina is like, I'm grumpy, I'm happy, I'm sad. Um, it's just like click, 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 going through the wheel of emotions. This is because of the waves of energy that are coming at us. Remember, they're coming at us from our galaxy, from within our universe, from the sun's activity, from the earth's activity. We are really expanding our field that what is six feet and beyond us is part of us. What is on the earth is part of us. What is in our universe is part of us. When you raise your frequencies, your environment gets bigger. Your environment is not the room you're sitting in. You are outside the room you are sitting in. You are across the city and town, state, the region, the country that you are in, you are deep at the bottom of the sea. You are way up in the atmosphere. You are sitting on the sun. You're hugging Venus. You are out tapping Pluto a high five. I mean, you are in the Milky Way. So that engagement is not something that we slow down to think about a lot because I think it would break our brains. And I think that it even kind of hurts just to talk about it. It seems a little weird, but you are made of energy. Everything else is made of energy. And as you become more aware, awakened, ascended, whatever words you want to put on it, your energy is increasing. You are now aware of how that is feeding you and how you are feeding it. It's going to come in glimpses before the full story comes out. But this is what you're doing. <laughs> so with our anxieties, things that can help our anxieties is breath work. As I take a deep breath, <laughs> breathing, 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 breathing. Have you noticed how... Um, certain modalities have really come from like far in the back to like really important. We never really used to talk about breath. I mean, if you got surgery, you kind of went home with that little game and you had to blow in the tube and you had to get the ball to like stay in between two lines for a certain amount of time. And that was it. Now it's like breath work, breath work, somatic breath work, a yogic breath work, breath of fire, breath of, you know, lion breath, all this, da, 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 da. 
breathing. And it is true scientifically, we have less oxygen in our atmosphere than what we did in the 1920s and the 1950s. So our body is needing to adapt with less oxygen and it's requiring for us to take deeper breaths. Hmm. And we're also coming across some viruses and bacteria we've never seen before, whether they are man-made or from somewhere hidden under a rock and our bodies are needing to adapt to that. So breathe. So when anxiety or emotions are shifting gears as fast as you shift gears in your car to race somebody else down the street, breathe. Quality thing here is notice when the emotions are there. We've been trained so long, especially in the American culture and a lot in the Asian cultures, that when you have an emotion, you are to maintain it or to hold it and check with your environment to see if it's appropriate to express it or not. So you would check in with your person and if you were with somebody who was a, a respectable figure to you or a provider for you, you wouldn't necessarily express your emotion out of respect. So you would have to hold it. So we're unraveling from that because now our environment, again, is not our room or the person you're standing in front of. It is outside, across the state, across the region, across the earth, from the seas to the atmosphere over on Venus, down in Pluto, down in the Milky Way. That's our environment. It's our new environment. It's where we play. We don't talk about it a lot though. So it's going to affect how we process our emotions. Now, this is me talking, only me. I need you to come up with your own opinion. If you like how I see things, great. Take it, scoop it up, figure it out for yourself. But from my work in the last 30 odd years globally and being in this world for a really long time, the psychic world, intuitive world, subtle light energy world, I have grown very fond of the power of emotions. And I fully believe that we are emotional beings, not human beings. Yes, we are energetic beings, but I feel that the emotions are the most powerful thing. I think we're in a fad or we're stuck right now in our evolution of believing that the mind has the most power. And I think once we figure out what the mind does, so do step through mindfulness, do read a little Joe Dispenza, do get in there and do manifestation work, you know, get a hold of that thing. It is extremely powerful, but science can't even figure out why we have an emotion. Now we've read a lot of books in our book club. If you're part of the YouTube membership, thank you so much. Like we're reading one right now called The Crack in Creation, Real scientific, not a lot of woo in there. No woo, actually. But um, it's very eye-opening about how energy is working itself out through cellular expression, et cetera. That um, I've been looking for, how do we define emotions? And everybody has a little bit of a different opinion. And what comes first in expression for a human being? Is it a physical reaction? Is it a mental thought? Or is it an emotional expression? So we know in our body when we produce certain hormones that it stimulates a certain emotional response and it also stimulates a thought. But what comes first, chicken or egg? In my opinion, I feel that we have an emotional response first and that triggers the physical and the mental body to respond. But you got to do your own digging. I think it's fascinating that science really can't pinpoint where emotions are coming from. They're just kind of sitting to the side. Some say, like, um, it was a Joe Dispenza, says that emotions are expressed from the mental body not being clear enough. When the mental body is not clean, clear, directed, then we have outbursts. And that these outbursts are because the mental body isn't managed. I... I, I want to flip that dialogue, but we can get into that another day. <laughs> um, oh, LB, I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> um, been teaching seven year, my seven-year-old the power of breath and shifting molecules in the air, says Shetland Pony Prentice. Please keep that up. I love it. Keep it going. So breath work is going to help us manage the emotional expression and the anxieties and the shifting of gears, but also being able to name it. So if you don't know many names to emotions, please get some emotion cards. Emotions are different than feelings. Feelings are what is expressed in the physical body, like chills, that's a feeling, racing heart, that's a feeling, feeling hot, feeling cold, feeling sweaty, feeling wet. But 
expression of love is not a feeling, that's an emotion. So we got to get clear in our language a little bit. And if you really enjoy getting clear in your language and figuring out those things, definitely join me over in Compassionate Communication. We're going to bump that to a one-day workshop for those of you who are struggling to do a six-week series. So let me know if you like one-day workshops on Friday or a Saturday. And we're going to go through, it's going to be a day. <laughs> it's going to be a day. <laughs> um, we're going to go through compassionate communication where you can identify what emotions you're going through. And it really will heighten your experience of your psychic abilities. <laughs> Shadow says, I don't know if language is caught up with those differences. Right? I agree. Lillian's voting for Saturday. Yay. Amora, oh no, are we wrapping up? Just waking up. <laughs> yep, we're wrapping up. I have my trance channeling class, and today we are going to do a little bit of kundalini. So if you are in my trance channeling class, get ready to move in like 30 minutes. <laughs> my whole day. <laughs> Yay. So ascension side effects good ugly you get to decide the overall key thing here is as our energy increases let's allow our belief systems and our reactions to what is happening so call that a trigger or whatnot to shift with it so when we're experiencing something new whether that's crying the anxiety the headaches the dizziness the slow metabolism um, the, oh, there's so many more, <laughs> I'm blanking on them. I was going to say like achy joints, but, uh, time differences, things of that nature. Let's apply a level of high, high, say hi to it, connect to it, and then lift up or fall up into a new perspective and just say, hey, how can I make this easier? Tap into your body's intelligence. What can I do here? Because if we're going to react from being human and do those like quick fixes that we're used to and not seek for a different approach with that which is different for you, then you're going to come across a lot of conflict and it might feel like you are going in reverse, um, feeling stuck, need to break through life, you know, need to do something outrageous to really feel alive or feel like yourself. So one day at a time, here's our, here's our pinky promise moment, okay? This pinky promise, one day at a time, that when it happens, we fall back or up, we change our perspective, maybe take a deep breath, <sighs> ask our body, hey, how can we make this easier? Get into dialogue with it, apply a level of acceptance, and then approach it from that angle, approach it from somewhere different than what we've been doing before. That's going to maintain our growth, our spiritual frequency growth. And then all of a sudden, we're not going to have the displaced headaches or dizziness because the body is catching on because you're not resisting it anymore and just allowing it to be. I mean, the good news is you still get to keep your body. You're not losing that thing. The earth is still here. Your things are still around. You'll still have your identity, your character but you might want to express it different. I think my last text I sent to Colleen is, I'm ready to be more eccentric. And I just laughed. I go, I don't really know what that means, but I'm ready to be more of me. You know, <laughs> I had a strange moment last night that I, I can't share <laughs> publicly, but I'll share in some of my private classes or um, in uh, the exclusive YouTubes. So I'll see some of you over there. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I hope our chat today helped you out and just deciphering what's going on mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually with these energy shifts that you're going through and how to not fight them, resist them, defend them, but to rise above it, see if we can hug it, accept it, and enjoy. Oh, Maitland is saying hi and bye <laughs> and um, enjoy the changes that we're all going through. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. You make my dreams come true by being here. Uh, if I could, and it paid me enough and doesn't quite yet, I would sit and talk to you guys every day, all day. Like this is so cathartic, it's so healing, and it's just so beautiful to watch all of you take care of each other in the chat thread. Take care, Luminaires. Have an incredible day. Remember, it's not woo-woo. 
it's true, true. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.